The presidency has finally broken its silence on the controversy surrounding the rearrest of the convener of revolution now by men of the Department of State Services on Friday. The government insists it is well within the powers of the DSS to arrest anyone it has anything on without necessarily seeking the approval of the president. According to a statement by a presidential spokesman, the DSS does not necessarily need the permission of the presidency in all cases to carry out its essential responsibilities that are laid down in the Nigerian constitution, which was the foundation for the restoration of democracy in our country in 1999. The statement further says the arrest of Mr. Shoare should not be a surprise to anyone since he is a person of interest to the service. The government is also justifying the DSS action by accusing Mr. Shoare of calling for a revolution to overthrow the democratically elected government of Nigeria on television and from a privileged position as the owner of a widely read digital newspaper run from the US. As far as the government is concerned, the motive of the Revolution Now conveners is not any different from that of Boko Haram insurgents in the Northeast, which the government insists also fancy themselves as fighting for some sort of revolution. The statement also notes that Mr. Shore is no ordinary citizen expressing his views freely on social media and the internet, since he was a presidential candidate who ran as a flag bearer of the African Action Congress on the February 23 general elections. But the United States government does not share the federal government's sentiment on the rearrest of Mr. Shore, and the U.S. government made that clear through the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor of the U.S. State Department. The Bureau on its Twitter handle says, We are deeply concerned that Shore has been re-detained in Nigeria shortly after a court ordered he be released on bail. Respect for rule of law, judicial independence, political and media freedom and due process are key tenets of democracy. This is coming as the Department of State Services deny the involvement of its operatives in the attempt to arrest Mr. Shore and his co-accused, Mr. Lawale Bakari, within the premises of the Federal High Court in Abuja on Friday, December the 6th. Armed DSS operatives had invaded the court in an attempt to re-arrest Shore and Bakari, who were standing trial for treasonable felony and money laundering after releasing them less than 24 hours earlier. In the meantime, counsel to Mr. Shore and human rights lawyer Mr. Femi Falana insists the DSS is guilty of desecrating the court in spite of the denial by the service. The DSS has, however, denied infiltrating the court. The service said it did not attempt arresting Shore inside the court, alleging that his supporters only stage managed the drama to bring the service to disrepute. Debunking the claim by the SSS, Mr. Falana says not only did the SSS officials invade the court premises, causing the court to hurriedly end its activities, their leader also apologized to the judge. According to Mr. Falana, the presiding judge, Ijomo Juku, had summoned the head of the DSS team in her chambers and asked him to justify the invasion of the court, after which he reportedly offered an apology before he was asked to withdraw his men from the courtroom. Let's take you to other stories now. In spite of the victories against insurgents in the northeast region, many of the victims affected by the decade-long insurgency are still in dire need of rehabilitation. This is coming from some of the United Nations agencies providing humanitarian services in the region. The head of the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in the country, Mr. David Lubari, while reviewing activities in the region, says the agencies and the Yobe state government will continue to reach out to vulnerable persons in order to provide necessary rehabilitation where necessary. Yobe State in the Northeast appears to have left the ravages of the Boko Haram insurgency behind. Previously internally displaced persons have left the IDP camps and many now reside in these 282 bedroom apartments built for them by the state government. As of today, we have uh, approved and the communities have implemented about 280 two-bedroom houses across those areas I have mentioned. And this has uh, helped them a lot in providing shelter over their head. Uh, but... Five, ten, six, ten. 
Schools have also been built for the children of IDPs. The IDPs appear to have put their ordeals behind them as they appreciate the government's gesture. Boko Haram members killed my husband and I fled here with my children and siblings. A plot of land was allocated to us by the Yobe state government and they also supported us with funds to build this house. Before now, my family used to sleep in a leather tent, but today I have a house of my own. We have water and other social amenities. Our children have started going to school. So I call on the agency to do more so my other colleagues can also benefit. Government's efforts are often supported and complemented by United Nations agencies providing humanitarian services in the Northeast. This gathering of representatives of UN humanitarian agencies and Yobe indigents is here to chat a way forward. We work very strongly in partnership. The sectors, for example, are collected by the line ministries in part to get and, call it and supported by the relevant United Nations organizations and international organizations. So this is how strong we work together both in coordination and in we, we conduct joint assessments for example, take decisions and uh, this, is the, this is how we should move forward. We have made tremendous improvement over the years. We have, we have made improvement in terms of coordination, in terms of localization and we are happy that our partners have keyed into the priorities of His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Yobe State. So going forward to 2020, we hope that more intervention will key into the priority of the Governor, and we hope that with the new ministry, more coordination will be strengthened, and the vulnerable, the most disadvantaged people of concern will receive the best of intervention in 2020. During the process, some council chiefs were recognized for their contributions towards the resettlement of IDPs. With the agencies and the state government's intervention, many of the IDPs have been returning to their ancestral homes while the resettled ones have been given a new lease of life. In Orange State, the government has launched and commissioned an alternative dispute resolution in a multi-court house in Shagamo local government area of the state. The state government believes the initiative, which is already in place in some parts of the state, is to ensure effective and quick dispensation of justice. Given the persistent problem of delays in justice delivery owing to numerous criminal cases compared to available resources, the Ogun State Government is commissioning an alternative dispute resolution and multi-door courthouse in Shagamu. <laughs> Members of the bench and the bar, mediators, conciliators, Traditional rulers as well as state government officials are here for the event, which marks a new dawn in the dispensation of justice in the state. Has not gone beyond keying into the alternative dispute resolution mechanism, but bringing alternative dispute resolution to the doorsteps of the good people of Ogun State and investors. In effect, the Ogun Multidel Courthouse at Abeokuta, which has been hosting people of diverse interests, will continue to serve Abeokuta and its environs while that of Ijebu, they will serve the people of Ijebu land. The people of Oguste should keep into it. In fact, I'm aware that uh, in Abeokuta in Ijebu, the people are assessing this court, multi-door courthouse. When you say multi-door, there are different doors to, for you to settle your dispute without necessarily going through the rigors of our court system. Delay, expenses, and what have you. Lawyers to participate in this process and does not deny them of their, you know, their wages uh, from their clients. So it's a welcome development. The deputy governor encourages residents to take advantage of the opportunity for settling civil cases promising that the government will continue to respect human rights and the rule of law. The construction and commissioning of this complex, it complements the agenda of our government, the building our future together agenda. This agenda encourages investment in all sectors of our state and especially the SME sector. The use of this uh, facility will definitely be very useful in, in uh, encouraging investments and also sorting out disputes in that sector. 
Globally, alternative dispute resolution is a widely used method of conflict resolution, the main advantage being the quick and less acrimonious means of settling disputes between conflicting parties. And now to some labor issues, or what some might call money issues. In spite of reports that university lecturers are refusing to be enrolled on the IPPIS salary scheme, the federal government says they are being registered. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, told Channel Television's Ladia Kiridulwale on our current affairs program, Newsnight, that when the period for enrollments on the scheme expires, governments will stop paying salaries of those not captured on the program. Mrs. Ahmed says the registration period was extended because people were still being captured. IPS implementation has made tremendous progress. We have most of the agencies of government on IPS, including the Nigerian military and the police. We have the last batch of uh, five of the security agencies, which they're not large in number, uh, but they are also doing the enrollment now. We have federal polytechnics completely done. We have colleges of education, some of them done, some the, the, uh, the capture process is ongoing as we speak. We have staff out in the field. We have the universities currently going, uh, undergoing the capture as well. Despite, the yes, despite what you hear in the media, our staff are out there doing this capture. So I read what I hear, uh, what I see in the papers, and we just go on with the work. We don't believe in making a lot of noise. We just do the work. But at the end of the day, um, as, our, uh, as our staff are out in the field, if they come back to report that there is any of the institutions or any of the staff that refuse to be captured, then we will stop those salaries. We were to stop salaries in October, but because the capture was taking long, because you have to go to every institution, you have to see every staff, you have to uh, document them and do the capture. It was ongoing, we didn't implement. But we're at the stage now where we can say, okay, we, it is very clear there's this institution or that institution that is not cooperating, then we'll stop there. But universities have been captured as well, as we speak. For the full interview with Mrs. Ahmed, do watch Newsnight tomorrow, Monday, December the 9th, 2019 at 9pm, only on Channels Television.